If you want to learn everything there is to know about configs and bhop and movement, then you've come to the right place because I'm going to be going over everything config related from how to install the config to how the config code works, to how to bhop, to how to long jump, to how to jump bug, and I'll even go over some of the older terms that don't really exist anymore like mini jumps and pixel surfs and everything. And so if by the end of this video you don't know how to bhop like Foon, then I sent you to a month of Valorant matchmaking and gold elo with eDater teammates. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. Oh, hold on, hold on, my bad. Uh, my bad. I was wiping some shit off. El narrador se ha cerrado esperadamente. Si esto no se esperaba, visite el sitio web oficial de Microsoft. I don't know what the f*** is happening. All right, so let's install the config. First thing you want to do is you want to go to the Discord link in the description and go to the config channel and download the config. Once you've downloaded it, you want to extract it and you'll be left with these files here. These five configs, what you do with these is you select them all and control C to copy them. Then go over to Counter-Strike on Steam and browse local files. Then you want to go to, this is very important, you want to go to game, then CSGO, and then CFG. And here you want to paste them. I already have them here, so you don't need to do this. Once you've done this, all you need to do is go to Counter-Strike 2 again, click properties, and you want to put just this in your launch options. I'll put this in the description so you can copy paste it as well. And uh, yeah, once you've done that, all you have to do is boot your game and you're all set with the config. See. Exiting narrator. So when it comes to changing the key bindings for your config or the buttons and what they do, all you have to do is come over to where you have your auto exec and make sure you only edit the auto exec, right click it and either open it in notepad, notepad++, visual studio, whatever you have. Once you open it up, it'll look something like this. Everything is organized and labeled, so it should be pretty easy to change. All of this stuff here, you don't want to touch. All of this stuff here that's labeled because you change anything in this, it'll break the whole thing. This part down here is where you want to change stuff. So mouse wheel down for jump, mouse wheel up for jump, and then mouse button four for long jump, mouse button five for jump bug, which I'll get into a little bit later. And then this button here is to turn off and on your HUD. And this is for no clip. So that's pretty much all that's in the config. And if you want to change anything, make sure you change just this part here. So you change the key and then you hit control S to save your changes. And then all I have to do is either restart your game or go to the main menu and exec auto exec. And that's how you change the key binds. Uh, but I actually don't. I've, uh, I've got a pretty old one. And I learned how to bunny hop. Have you seen this? Amazing. I'm entirely sure I put this clip in. I was going to put it in. So now that you have your config set up, let's learn how to bunny hop. Bunny hopping is pretty simple. It is made of three parts. And those are speed control, air strafing, and jump timing. Speed control is pretty simple. If you look in the top left here at the velocity, when you run with your knife out, the default speed unit is 250 units. But with B-hop, that limit gets increased to 300. And so if you're bunny hopping and your units are not over 290 or 300, then unfortunately you are not B-hopping correctly. Next one is air strafing. Now, for reference, this is what a strafe looks like. It's just going left and right. And an air strafe looks like this, which is just going left and right in the air. So the way you air strafe is you want to run forward a little bit to give yourself some forward momentum and then jump. The second you jump, you want to press a directional key, so either A or D, and you want to start slowly looking in that direction. So it's not a it's not a quick turn like this. You're not trying to turn into a direction. You're trying to curve your way into it. So the way you can check that you are air strafing properly again is by looking at the speed on the top left. So when running and jumping normally with no mouse movement, you're staying at 250. But if you were to run an air strafe, you can see your speed gets up to 280. And that's where you get your speed from when you're bunny hopping. So once you're able to get all the air strafes down to like 280, 270 units, something like that, then you can start scrolling the second you land and it'll start looking like this. So you scroll 
the second you jump and you can see you're gaining a lot of speed already just by doing that without having to uh, chain more b-hops together and that's when we get into the jump timing so the reason we have jump on the scroll wheel is because it spams inputs way more faster than we can with our hands so when you scroll like this it's the equivalent of just doing this but a lot of times in one second so we can get the uh perfect jump just wanted to pop in real quick to add that scroll speed is also a really important factor of bunny hopping. So this website here, I'll put a link to it in the description, basically lets you test out your scroll speed. So if you see here, if you scroll normally, like slowly, you'll see that it stays at a solid line. If you start scrolling really quickly, you'll see that it starts breaking up the line. So when you're B hopping, you want to be scrolling at a speed that keeps it consistent because that's how we get inputs into the game. So if for some reason you're trying to bunny hop and it's not working, come to this website and just try scrolling how you would in game. If you're seeing gaps like this, this is where your input's not detected. So try to get used to scrolling at a pace that would keep it whole and solid and then that'll make your B hops a whole lot better. So get in a server, get used to doing this and then start trying to chain them together. So do one. And then the second you jump, press the other directional key and link the other way and just keep trying to chain that together until it looks something like this. You can either scroll up and down, you can scroll only up, you can scroll only down, whichever way you want, whichever way is the easiest. But this is the easiest way to be hop. Just single strafes, left and right, nothing too difficult. Now, another thing I want to note about be hopping that I think is pretty important is being able to visualize it. So with B-Hop, you're not going in a straight line. You're going kind of side to side following a line. I've even made a little graph here. So as you can see on the far left, what I'm showing is just this here. As you can see, this isn't bunny hopping and this isn't giving me a lot of speed. Now, the second example, B-Hop 1, is what a more advanced B-Hop would look like, I guess you would say. And that's b-hopping but following the line so you are flaring off to the side but ultimately you are coming back into the center this is good if you're trying to b-hop down like a narrow hallway or something like that then this is good to have but the b-hop method that i just showed right now is b-hop 2 which looks like this another thing i wanted to add is using the environment you can also use things in the environment to help you out so one of my favorite things to do is using doorways to start jumps you basically run to a door frame and you just scroll and you'll see you get pushed down so same concept goes you jump and you hit your head and then you pretty much just get like a little speed boost <gasps> wait what the f clara Clara, give me one second. Clara. Alright, so let's move on to long jumps. Long jumps, or LJs as they're known, or LJ binds or whatever, they're pretty self-explanatory. So a long jump is just a jump that is a little bit longer and a lot more complicated. Normally in CS2, your jumps are around 218 to 226 units in uh, distance. With a long jump bind, or if you perform a long jump, you can get anywhere from 240 all the way up to 290 or something like that. I think that was the record in CSGO. Pretty useless, I'm not gonna lie. Like when you're actually playing the game, you could use it to get into a couple of places, but you can also do that normally without a long jump. It's mainly used just for like long jump servers where you see all those people shaking their mouses all the time. To do a long jump, you basically jump and crouch and you do a little bit of air strafing in the air for some distance and then you land crouch. There is a bind that helps it out, the LJ bind, which I have mine set to a space. So with a normal jump, as you can see, you just kind of jump in the air, but with a long jump bind, you do kind of like a little crouch thing. So it crouches for you automatically, so you don't have to worry about that. And then you can go for a long jump. Generally, when you're playing the game, you won't really be using this. Uh, it's mainly used to help you hit uh, more consistent jump bugs, which I'll get into next, which is just that right there. Yeah, it's pretty cool, I guess, if you're into that kind of stuff. But yeah, that's uh, those are long jumps and the long jump bind. Cardi Vagban? No. Seriously? No. Seriously? No. Seriously? No. Alrighty, so now jump bugs. Jump bugs are a movement mechanic that negates fall damage. They can also be used to get into places that are slightly above what you can normally jump to. 
They have one limitation and that is that they can't be done everywhere. They do require certain heights you have to jump from in order to hit them. But there are certain things you can do and certain binds you can use like the long jump bind that makes them slightly more consistent on flat ground and at heights that they don't work at. Now the way jump bugs work is basically when you fall from a height in the game, you will take fall damage. If you jump crouch though from a certain height and just before you hit the floor, you uncrouch and jump at the same time, you will get something that's called a jump bug and it basically gives you like a little Super Mario jump type of boost. Now we do have binds for it as it can be done manually and with a bind. Now obviously I have the bind for it in my config so I'm going to show you how to use it with a bind. But basically what the bind does is it does that final bit of uncrouching and jumping for you. Now when it comes to hitting jump bugs on flat ground if you use a long jump bind you will actually be able to get just enough height to hit one in game. So there are two kinds of jump bugs you can hit. There are long jump jump bugs and non-long jump jump bugs. Um, an example of a non-long jump jump bug would be this one here on Nuke on Silo, where if you run and jump right before you hit the edge of this little lid and you hold crouch in the air and hit the jump bug bind right before you hit the floor, you will hit a jump bug. Now, an example where you will need a long jump bind is this one here on Heaven on Nuke, where you jump off this railing and do a jump bug. Now, for this one, you run and jump, but instead of jumping with your regular scroll wheel, you actually jump with your long jump, and then you can hit the jump bug. And there's a bunch more examples of this in the game, like this one here on Nuke and everything. But I am working on a video that will hopefully show pretty much all the jump bugs you can do in this game. So keep an eye out for that. But uh, yeah, other than that, that's uh, pretty much pretty much what jump bugs are. Just a quick heads up, the things that I'm going to be talking about don't really exist in the game anymore. But people still talk about them and I still see questions about them. So I'm just going to talk about them anyway. But you don't have to worry about this stuff. This stuff's not in the config right now. This is just extra. Patera, why you... What is the... Why you bully me? <laughs> You fucking bitch, why you bully me? Everyone asking, liquid one. So, mini jumps were an older movement tech that is still sort of around today, it's just not as popular. Basically, it's, it's in the name, it was just a jump that was a little bit shorter than a regular jump. It was mainly used to optimize movement routes. So for example, jumping on like the, the little, the horse in a window to jump to bricks, you would use a mini jump there to save you a bit of time on the jump. They weren't super, super useful. They were they were used for some other stuff, but it's kind of irrelevant. But yeah, mini jumps, they were, they were a thing. They're also called MJs as well. Pixel Surfs are a movement tech that let you surf lips between textures in Counter-Strike. It started off in Go and it had its little premonition in CS2 for a little bit. But basically the reason Pixel Surfs exist and the reason that they work is because in Counter-Strike, when you are creating textures and you want to put two textures together, you have to make two entities that then are placed next to each other. But when you do that, sometimes some pixels will stick out like a lip and that lip is what we surf with pixel surf so there used to be a bind for this uh, in cs2 that basically pushed you into the wall like millimeters like fractions of a pixel and that would hook you onto that lip and let you surf it and it was really really fun you could do it in a bunch of places on a bunch of different maps but of course Valve took it away and now we don't have it so that is slash was pixel surfs so last but not least, we have nulls or null binds, and the way these worked was basically if you were going for strafe, so say you were pressing A and then D, the second you would press the D key, it would automatically deregister the A key, and so it basically made strafing a lot easier, it really helped with counter strafing, and uh, it became really prominent during the snap tap era, if you guys remember that, the whole like wooting and the razor keyboards and stuff. When that got banned, nulls pretty much got patched. They still kind of exist nowadays through some auto exec stuff you could do, but personally, they don't really work like they used to, so I don't put them in my configs, but that's, uh, that's nulls. But that's pretty much all I have. Thank you guys so much for watching. I do have a Discord server now that you can join. Link in the description. Tap in, tap in. That's where I'll be posting uh, any new configs that come out or movement news or anything like that. So that's really cool. And if you have any questions, you can come in there and ask. But yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you guys in the next one. Deuces.